right, good evening, everyone, and welcome back to Butler, Pennsylvania, as the Blue Sox look to sweep the Kokomo Jackrabbits tonight after a 5-1 win last night. I'm Jaron Steele, joined tonight by Kellen Gursky again. Kellen, good to have you back. Uh, really, maybe the most all-around game the Blue Sox have played all summer last night with that 5-1 victory. Yeah, I don't really think uh, there's much of an argument uh, from anybody that watched last night's game uh, to that statement, Jaron. I mean, in every facet of the game, Butler was uh, dominant with, with hitting, uh, with pitching, uh, with the fielding. I mean, it, it was all around. I mean, uh, the defense made some spectacular plays, and uh, Bucci last night, Nick Bucci on the mound for the uh, Butler Blue Sox took a no-no into the fifth inning. Uh, I mean, he, he was fantastic, and the hitting was fantastic as well, and um, not much more you can ask for in a ball game, and hopefully, hopefully tonight uh, the Butler Blue Sox can uh, do it again. Yeah, and uh, we'll give you a lineup here for Kokomo tonight. And uh, leading off will be number two, Luke Fegan, followed by number 15, Jared Watkins. In the three spot will be Romero Harris. Then it will be the cleanup here will be the DH, number 32, Colin Bukowitz. And it's uh, number 11, Sam Troy, followed by number 10, Imani Willis. Frankie Jesse Oro will wear number three in bat seventh. The eighth spot will go to number 12, Wyatt Schwing. And the nine hitter will be number six, Andrew Curran. And they'll face Bryce Spack, a left-hander from Seton Hill. He was appeared in uh, three games, or two games this summer, both being starts, 11 innings pitched, 12 hits, seven runs, five of them earned, 13 strikeouts to five walks, a 4.09 ERA and a 2-0 record, a win in West Virginia and a win in Danville, to his credit, so far this year. And defense behind him, we'll have Ray Gonzalez behind home plate, Patrick Ferguson at first, Damian McLeone at second, uh, Brady Gulikowski at third, Paven Parks is the shortstop. In left field is Stefan Merkonja, in center is Ben Carew, and in right is Calvin Scott. Blue Sox in their blue road uniforms tonight while the Kokomo Jackrabbits are in their home whites, but, uh, well, we're playing in Butler, but... Uh, it's something nobody told the, the, <laughs> the people who laid the uniforms out today. But I got to wear the road ones, I guess, every once in a while at home. I don't know why, but they seem to do it every summer. Well, here we go. First pitch about to be thrown from SPAC, a lefty from Seton Hill University. Here's his first offering. It's a called strike. First pitch tonight is 7.05, or right on the button. And it is currently 79 degrees and pretty, pretty darn nice out here tonight. Home plate umpire is Mark Schmidt, Patrick McConville on the bases. They had a little trouble getting here because of traffic, but did arrive in time, obviously. And oh. pitch just missed. It's one and one. Yeah, it looked like the same same pitch that uh, started the game off there uh, from Bryce Spack. And now well, we, we aren't going to see 16 strikes in a row like we saw last night. That was a heck of a feat by Nick Bucci. Just one strike in a row here to start the game for Spack. Spack's delivery is up and in. Yeah, that was uh, quite a start for Nick. He, he goes seven strong last night. He only allowed one run. Took a no-hitter into the, what, fifth inning? Yep, into the fifth. Uh, retired uh, 11 of the first 12 guys he faced. And the only guy he reached base was on a walk. There's a hard liner to short. Fielded by Parks. Throw to first. Will retire Fegan to begin the ball game. <laughs> Yeah, good start here, and here's Jared Watkins. Watkins is from Indiana State. Left-handed hitting second baseman. And here's Bitch. It's inside. Watkins... I believe batted third last night. Yep, he went one for four last night too. One of the only uh, Kokomo Jackrabbits to, to get it. I believe only what four last night against uh, against the Blue Sox. 1-0 fastball in there for a called strike. One one, it's just outside, but uh, good location from Spac. He he kind of uh, he's got an interesting delivery. 
It just might look weird to us because he's from the left side. We haven't seen too many left-handed pitchers for Butler this summer. Pitch high. Lapiana is the other lefty starter for the team. Herzing is a lefty out of the pen. And last night, Merconjo, mm -hmm. who's playing left field, lefty out of the bullpen as well. The 3 1. Ooh, big cut. Nothing of it, though. He did say, the umpire says he did get it, just must have just nicked that ball as it went into the mid of Gonzalez. Yeah, it's a, that's a definition of a 3 1 swing there by Jared Watkins. He got a fastball, got the pitch he wanted. I took a mean rip at it, just missed it. And the payoff. Fouled off. Ooh. Just barely hit the net and stays in. We'll do it again here, 3-2. It's high for ball four. Get that bat by Watkins, draws a one-out walk. Bring up Romero Harris. Moving up in the order as well from the four spot last night. I believe Harris struck out twice Last night he did strike out twice. It was 0 for 3 with two Ks, trying to obviously uh, work off of that and have a better night tonight. Yeah. Wabash Valley College sophomore. He uh, will have to move on from there after this year because it's a two-year school. Another ball from Spack. He's had a little bit of trouble locating here. And pitch low. Again, now Gonzalez going to have a quick word with him. It's a good visit there. Uh, you know, SPAC, as you said, um, having a little trouble here early on with uh, the location. And Gonzalez doing a good job going out there, calming his starter down. And he's just one pitch away. You know, he's been a little wild in this uh, first inning. But uh, one pitch can get him out of this inning and get that offense out there who has been potent thus far <laughs> for Butler. And the two O's, a little bit high, looked pretty good, but it must have just been above the belt. Yeah, it must have been, I and mean, that looked right about belt high, but normally you'll see that pitch given, especially you know in a 2-0 count, that's normally a hitter's pitch. I'm almost surprised that Ro Romero Harris didn't take a hack at that, and that was belt high. 3-0, that's right there for a called strike. Even though Harris thought it was ball four, he already had discarded the bat, but quickly gets it back from his Teammate the on deck circle, Bukowitz. That looked like the same pitch yeah, almost. It was very that, similar. Was, that was very, very close to the same location, but <laughs> a 3 0, you know, you're probably going to see that pitch called a strike. It was like middle, middle. 3 1. That one's a little bit high. Ball four. I, I don't think Spack thinks those are balls. He, he kind of just swore in his, in his uh, glove. And yeah, I mean, those are, you know, those are. The <laughs> They're not exactly where you want to throw the ball by any means. You don't want to throw that ball up belt high. You don't want to live there. No. But most of the time, you're going to get a, a strike called out of that. You know, it's it's the definition of where you don't want to throw it as a pitcher, but um, it just hasn't been called a strike yet for SPAC. No, uh, Paven Park sensing the frustration went in and have a, had a quick word with SPAC. He, he, he yelled something into his glove. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, after that last pitch was called a ball. Runner takes off, throw down by Gonzalez. He is, he, 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 his fingers came off the bag. His fingers come off the bag, but he calls him safe anyway. Ooh, that was close. That was close. Tough to tell uh, as well if uh, the third baseman, Gulakowski, for Butler kept that tag on as he slid off the bag. You're exactly right. He definitely came off the bag. Yeah, but he might have, he might have, you're right. He might have. I don't know. That. He qu kind of uh, swipe tagged. Uh, real quick, he, I don't know, he didn't really keep it on there, but uh, that's a good job uh, getting that stolen base by Watkins. Pitch high again. It's back laboring here in the first inning. He's got runners at the corners now after that stolen base. I thought they were going to run themselves into an out there for a second. Good throw by Gonzalez. Yeah. 
He uh, got a good jump out there at second base, did Watkins. Uh, he slid through it, but was able to dive back to the bag safely in the eyes of Mr. McConville, our bases umpire. It's 3-0 and now after another ball, and Spack is... Uh, you gotta take a breath here. Yeah, you know, and, and you could sense the frustration as we, as you mentioned, you know, the the, the pitches there against uh, Harris that were borderline uh, strikes, probably should have been strikes, but weren't. You know, you gotta put that past you. You can't let it affect you uh, when the next guy comes up to the plate. Pitch outside, and now I think it's time for uh, maybe Forbes to come out now. Yeah, here he comes. He's gonna come out and try to calm him down a little bit because he's walked three in a row here. <laughs> And really, I think uh, uh, he's only thrown one or two strikes in, in this span. Yeah. And one of them was a rope uh, to short uh, to Paven Parks on a one hop. Um, fortunate that that ball wasn't hit uh, foot to the left or right because a run would have already scored by now. Yeah, that's true. But uh, I'm sure Forbes is out there telling him that, you know, you just got to make one pitch. It, the, <laughs> he's walked three in a row, yet the bases are loaded with one out. A ground ball right at someone can get you out of this inning. It could change uh, the confidence uh, for Bryce Spack as well. Forbes, former catcher, Seton Hill. Perfect guy to have go out there and talk to a pitcher. Uh, you know, he's, he's been around. He's, he coached at Wittenberg University this year. And he's been an assistant here for three years. Good at trying to keep the pitcher calm, and you know you just sense it that he's oh yeah he's on the he's on the ropes mentally. Yep. Yeah, not a doubt about it. Yeah, he just needed to go out and tell him, hey, hit your spots, trust your stuff, all those things. Maybe give him a uh, he misses outside here. Maybe give him a a you know quickly, like, hey, this is what you're doing wrong. Right. Yeah, I mean that, that and that's you're exactly right. A catcher or a former catcher, I should say, is is a good guy to go out there and talk to a pitcher. It's a second pair of eyes that are watching and studying the pitcher as well. Called strike on the outer half. And to the Kokomo Jackrabbits, credit, they aren't swinging much either. No, yeah. I mean, they're, they're taking full advantage. They know that the pitcher's struggling. Why help him out if you know, he's walked three in a row? Be selective and, and, and you know, if he makes a mistake, hit it. One one's high. Book, uh, Troyer He's only playing in his third game with the Jack Rabbits. He's hitting 250 so far through two. Small sample size though. And here's pitch. Oh, big cut. Nothing of it though. See, they, uh, that's the second time he's gotten a guy to swing through. That was a better pitch though. That, yeah. was, that was on the outer half and uh, got him to swing through it. Yeah, now a big pitch here. Two strikes on Troyer. And if you're Troy here uh, for Kokomo, you just want to put that ball in play, try to get an early run. Uh, you definitely don't want to go by the way of a K, and well, there it is. Oh, my. He blew it right by him. And you can just tell he, he, he it's back. It's the first time we've gotten to see him. He, he wears his emotions out there on the mound. He was really, you could just tell he was just, you know, really ex not excited, but pumped yeah, to know a, that he got that big strike out there. That's a huge out. And, and now uh, you're one out away from getting out of an inning that, that could have been disastrous and obviously still you know still have to get that one out but things are looking up. Ooh, fastball high to Amani Willis. First time we got to see him. He, from Austin P, a junior from Marietta, Georgia. One oh it is a bouncer that Gonzalez is it will scoop up. Now your 2-0 count for Willis. This is uh, this is probably the one you'll be sitting dead red. Yeah, yeah, a 2-0 count with the bases loaded, uh, and two outs. You got to take a big hack, and I'm sure that's what Willis will do if he gets a pitch to hit. Yeah, he did get a pitch to hit, but he watches it go by for a strike, two and one. And you almost wonder, you know, you mentioned that that Kokomo's taking. If it's by design, I'm sure it is. Uh, you see a pitcher that's wild out there, but I mean that's middle middle belt high, and that's a perfect 2-0 pitch. 2-1, oh line drive to right field right at Scott, and that'll do it as he puts it away to end the inning. Boy, it's not often in an inning where you walk three guys, you come away, head back to the dugout without giving up a run. 
Yeah, uh, you very rarely see. And they hit two balls pretty well in that inning, too. The two uh, outs that were put in play, Fagan and Willis, they, they, they absolutely hit the ball on the screws just right at, at, right at the, the defense. Yeah, man. Uh, so the Kokomo leaves the bases loaded in the top half. Give me the Blue Sox batting order for this evening brought to you by the Butler Armco Credit Union. Leading off will be number 17, the center fielder, Ben Carew, followed by the shortstop, number 13, Paven Parks. In right field and batting third will be number eight, Calvin Scott. The third baseman, number 22, Brady Kulikowski, is the cleanup man, followed by the catcher, number seven, Ray Gonzalez. Patrick Ferguson back in the lineup after a night off. He'll bat sixth and play first. Followed by the left fielder, number three, Stefan Merkonja. The designated hitter this evening is number 24, Christian Webb. He will bat eighth, and the nine man will be the second baseman, number 21, Damian Maglione. And they will face from Jones County Junior College, number 16, William Freeman, a native of Seam, Alabama. 6'2, 215 righty. And so far on the summer, Freeman, three games, all of them starts, 15 and a third inning, 16 hits, 12 runs, eight of them earned, five walks, 21 strikeouts. He's allowed six doubles, two triples, and has a 4.69 earned run average. Freeman started opening day for the Jackrabbits through an eight inning shutout, and then the second start, didn't go very well. His 12 runs came across, Ooh. eight of them earned. Yeah, tale of two uh, two games, obviously, uh, for Freeman. And that was kind of the same story last night for uh, Nick Bucci as well, uh, for Butler. Had a really good start and then a, a not so good one. Uh, but that's the same way that William Freeman is today. So we'll see um, see the line or the way that he pitches today. Be, you know, the lineup for Butler, as we saw last night, they, uh, they're, they're ready to swing the bat. Yeah, yeah, they put three on the board in the first inning last night. Didn't look back. Yeah, they they were, I mean, they were just fantastic in that game. The offense really has been good all year. We've we've talked yeah. about that so many times on air. The offense is uh, this team's strong suit. Ben Carew takes a called strike from Freeman. And here's the 0-1. That's right there, too, for a call strike. Parks, or, or I'm sorry, not Parks. Car Carew thought that was a little bit outside, I think. He kind of looked at the um umpire after that. Maybe just checking to see where, he's, where he was calling that one. And the 0-2 popped up. And it, it will land in the second row of field level, just behind the dugout. Second life. Yeah, it's a good job uh, by Carew. That pitch probably would have resulted in a ball, but for some reason, I don't know why it is, uh, I myself can attest, uh, you know, playing baseball. For whatever reason, 0-2 at your letters always looks good. You always swing it. I don't know why it is, but a good job by Carew to, to fight that, that tough pitch off. Oh, that one was way high. But I think part of that is you don't want to go down looking. Right, yeah. And you see a fastball, you're thinking, you know, okay, this is the straight, probably the straightest pitch I'm going to get yeah. uh, when I'm down 0-2. Might as well try to put it in play. Oh, broke off a nice curveball there. Called strike three. That brings up Paven Parks. Parks has a couple homers on the summer. Had a triple last night. Scored a run. It's pitch low. Two guys with pretty good fastballs. I'll tell you what, this this Freeman, he's bringing it. Yeah, definitely throwing the ball hard. And, you know, it's going to be interesting for Butler. That ball's tagged. Yeah, that ball's hit hard to left field. Going back to the warning track to make the catch out there is Fegan for the second out. Boy, oh, man, that ball was hit well, but... 
it's just kind of like what happened to Kokomo in the top yeah. half. Somebody was there. Yeah. you got to give credit to the left footer. He read that ball off the bat and got there in plenty of time to make the catch. Yeah, it's not an easy ball to read. They, they say that the hardest ones to read are the ones right at you. And, uh, you know, a good job out there in left field uh, by Fagan. He took that first step back and didn't look back, just got to the wall. and or, Well, not to the wall. <laughs> just turned and ran towards the wall, I should say. Made a yeah. nice catch. I tell you what, if it was a little sunnier out right now, <laughs> we would have had much yeah. more problems oh with, yeah. with the sun behind the clouds. Uh, that that's kind of shaded out there. Curveball, a little bit high, I guess, or possibly inside. Regardless, it's a one-one count to Ch Calvin Scott. Ooh, takes a big cut at the fastball, comes up empty. Yeah, and, and that looked uh, might have been a fastball. It looked like he might have taken something off of it too there. Did Freeman? It looked like he was a little out in front. Was Calvin it Scott? But might have been a changeup. Yeah, right? yeah, that's what I was gonna say. <laughs> Still there. pretty heavy. Yeah, oh yeah. That's a fastball, and that's a strikeout. One, two, three. Go the Blue Sox in the bottom half of first. On to the second. It's scoreless. Well, top of the second here, scoreless so far. One team loaded the bases, that was Kokomo, the other, but their pitcher come out and was dealing in the first inning. Here's a big swing and a miss by Jesse Oro. These guys probably faced each other at some point this season, being a Slippery Rock Seton Hill matchup here. Oh, one one curveball, got him. To swing through it, nice pitch. It's only been two pitches, but boy, Spack looks like a different guy here. Yeah. Ac actually, probably since that strikeout he had of Troyer, he's been. Yeah, he's he's throwing a lot more strikes. Yeah. That's for sure, and that's that's the name of the game. That's half the battle. O oh, two, whoa, man, just outside apparently. Yeah, it looked good. Yeah, it looked like that belt high, uh, belt high fastball again. Just that pitch really hasn't been called all day though, so. time called I I think that one might have been a little bit off the plate but mm. but man that's that's a tough one to take if you're down to a two yeah no yeah. doubt about that but if you're locked in you're locked in you see that I suppose so yeah Jesse Orr was the toughest guy to get out last night and a pop up the shallow right racing out his Maglione and he will give way to Calvin Scott who makes the catch In the last three batters, um, 
<laughs> you hit it on the head that SPAC has looked completely different. Uh, the last three batters anyway, he's got the last three men he's faced to, uh, to get out. And, you know, that's uh, obviously a confidence booster after walking uh, three in a row and somehow getting out of it. Almost pulled the Houdini out there. Well, here is Wyatt Schwing. And he doesn't swing and takes a strike. Just by looking at Schwing, I would say that probably going to take a healthy hack. He's a pretty big boy. Yeah, he's got that catcher's build. Oh, yeah. Oh, there he is. <laughs> yeah, that sure was a big swing. <laughs> Jeez, oh, man. Uh, way to cool the temperature down <laughs> 10 degrees. My goodness. Surprised the umpire's still standing there. <laughs> that was a heck of a breeze coming from that. Here's the 0 2. Whoa, up by around the eyes. Easy to lay off. That's exactly uh, where Gonzalez wanted it, though. I noticed before the pitch was thrown, he threw his glove up high, flashed it high, and then wanted it a little lower than that, but. Uh, still, that's, that's where you want to throw it, 0-2. Uh, it's a good waste pitch. 1-2. Oh, a little, excuse me, hit out into left, and oh. the ball gets by Merkonja out there. Schwing's going to run for days. He's already around second. He'll head to third, misplay in the outfield, and Schwing slides in safely at third base with a one-out triple. Um, that... Yeah, I think that was the case of the uh, the old yeah, the Mr. Sun, Mr. Yeah. Sun behind us getting in his eyes. And there's not a, it's not out in full. Uh, it's covered by some clouds, but you know, just looking back at it, you can see what happened. I mean, <laughs> the, the sun's right, probably right where that ball was, and that was a low liner. Uh, you got a credit swing there. He was 0-2, stuck his bat out, and, and hit it hard. But to be know. to be fair, he's lucky it didn't hit him. It yeah, almost hit it him. It almost did. Yeah. It You're almost exactly hit him right, right in his shoulder as it went zooming by. Probably, <laughs> probably would have been better, though, yeah. for the Blue Sox. Had it did yeah. hit him, wouldn't have rolled to the wall. Yeah, Carew, by the time he got there, you know what? I'll tell you what, if, if uh, no offense to swing, but he's not the most fleet of foot. If that was a guy of, with any speed, he probably would have scored on that. Yeah, probably would have been an inside the parker, yeah. Foul ball out of play here. 0-2 oh on the nine-man Corinne. Cur he is played last thing and he also was in the nine spot I believe and he had an RBI single to his credit Move two one more time. Well, ball hit well to right. Racing over into foul territory is Scott. He made the catch. That'll allow a run to come in. Schwing comes in standing up. Nice catch out there by Scott, but that'll end up being a sacrifice fly and an RBI for Curran. It's one nothing Jackrabbits. But it's early in the game. You'll take the out. Yeah, and, and, and uh, that's a smart play out there um, by Scott in right field, knowing that uh, you know it's a much needed out gets us gets uh, the Blue Sox two two outs now a pitch away gets you out of it you know you can live with giving up one run especially out of a, a tough luck triple I know that's not yeah. said a whole lot but and it was a tough luck triple that's for sure depending on who it is it was a good luck triple for Schwing that's it, yeah that, that's true he hit the ball extremely well it was a bad luck triple if you're a, a fan of the home team here tonight. 1-0 count on the leadoff hitter, Fegan. He grounded to short. That's another one of them ones that looked like it was in there, but it was rolled a ball, and at, I looked uh, just looked out at back and he was looking up at the sky like, come on now. Yeah, I mean, that's belt high, and, I mean, he hasn't called it for a strike really all day, so uh, Spack's going to have to try to live low. Yeah, that, that almost tells me that he's going to he, – his strike zone is from, like, the – I don't know the the knees to like maybe down even down to the shins. Yeah. Uh, if he's gonna leave that high strike up, or it's just really tight, one or the other. Yeah, I think that's what I mean. That was that's, a good pitch yeah, there. That was a good I mean, pitch as well. I think it's just a really tight strike zone. Yeah, you're probably you're probably right. And Spack's gonna have to uh, 
try to adjust to it. I know that's a tough thing to do when, you know, uh, you don't want to throw the ball belt high, but when that's not even getting called for a strike, you know, you're kind of running out of options. It kind of makes it tough on you. And there is something to the fact that I've seen this before. It, it's, it's, it's with lefties. It seems like a fun attempt pulled back for a ball. They, it seems like sometimes they get cheated on strike zones. I don't know if it's just because it's the way the ball's coming in because they're coming it's coming from the other side of the you know the body. I, I don't know what it is, but sometimes it seems like they get a a much weirder strike zone. Now they get the runner picked off, but Ferguson dropped the ball. So I don't know what you rule here. I guess you give them. You probably give him a stolen base, I'm assuming, because... I think it's a picked off and then an error. It might be. It is, because they had put oh, an error is, on the yeah. board. Well, he probably... Well, I guess... Yeah, he went with the pitch. So... Or he went with first movement, I should say. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, you're probably... It probably is an error. I think Ferguson gets him with a good throw. Or, no, yeah, it's, that's not Ferguson. That's an E3. Pitch misses 2-0. and o. I, I think it's uh, maybe... Man, because they... I don't know if you give him a stolen base for that or not. It might be. I don't know. Just because he went on first movement, it might be. I don't, I don't know yeah. how you would score that. Well, either way, they should have had him out. Foul yeah. ball out of play. That's a tough one for a pitcher that's kind of labored through the yeah. first couple innings. See, he's, he's been bitten. He's made his own luck in some senses, but he's also been bitten a yeah. couple of times here. Yeah, there's not a doubt about it. That triple that results in a run that should have been maybe a single at most. Two one liner, two short off one hop. Pat, Pavement Parks to Patrick Ferguson. That'll end the inning. So limited damage here. One run on one hit, one error, and one man left on base. We'll go to the bottom half of the second with Kokomo leading one nothing. He was talking off air with Patrick, our scorekeeper, and it's a caught stealing E3. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's a, that's official. And the Kokomo Jackrabbits have a one nothing lead as we begin the bottom of the second with Brady Kulikowski at the plate. Pitch outside Freeman. Worked the one two three first, and really looked, <laughs> looked pretty dominant. A pair of strikeouts. The only, of course, Pavin did hit him hard to the left, but he's got a heavy fastball, and he's pouring it right over the heart of the plate and right not over the heart of the plate but he's locating it yeah. well I should say and he's doing a pretty good job of keeping them off balance because he, he drops in a curveball just like that yeah. he did there and man that's that's gonna be tough when you got that I'm gonna say 93 94 mile an hour fastball coming in and then you can drop off a you know 75 mile an hour curveball to go with that you're gonna be pretty dangerous there's a strike out again and that's the third K of the night for Freeman. Yeah, and you hit it on the head with with him throwing so hard. You know, you're geared up for that fastball. Then 
like you said, he, he drops off a curveball, and it's extremely tough. But uh, for the Blue Sox tonight, like we were talking about when we went off air, you just kind of get ready to go and, and hope uh, that it's a fastball because you're probably, if you're geared up, if you're thinking fastball, you're probably not going to hit that 75 mile an hour curveball. So yeah, absolutely not. So you got to be geared up for the fastball. If you get it, you got to put a good swing on it. Ray Gonzalez swings and misses at a bouncer that goes between the wickets of uh, Schwing, who tripled and scored last inning. And that uh, that sort of thing will happen when you know you have a pitcher like this yeah. out there. You're thinking, okay, I'm swinging first pitch, no matter where it is. And yeah. sometimes you'll swing, you'll swing at pitches in the dirt. I know, pitch outside. I this is this is a real test because this, this guy. Is a, I'll tell you, we've always seen him for an inning and a third here, but this guy looks like a, a, a true number one ace pitcher. And the way the offense has been rolling this year, this is this is a real test to see if they can they can crack this guy. I think um, it's going to be difficult. Yeah, definitely going to be difficult. You just got to try to stack as many chips as you can, get as many guys on base as you can. A little chopper to third. The throw across the diamond in time from Troyer, two away. I'm interested to see where this uh, Freeman's headed after. Well, he's only a freshman at Jones County Junior College, so he's got another year of Juco ball. But if he can, uh, if he can keep this up, he might be you know, looking at draft next spring yeah. uh, the Juco guys can go right away if he, with this stuff oh, oh that boy. smoked by Ferguson deep to the left center and good bye <laughs> Ferguson smokes it and as he said off there that's the guy if he puts his bat out he'll hit it a mile and that's exactly what he does obviously field over nonetheless and it's one to one Woo. Yeah, ball, you knew it off the crack of the bat. And, and it's been that way almost all year uh, for, for Ferguson. You know as soon as he hits the ball, whether it's going to be uh, an out or a home run there, and, I mean, that, that ball was crushed the opposite way. And that's uh, that was a shot, man. That was probably close to 400 feet. And uh, what's that, eight now? Eight home runs for that Patrick is. Ferguson. He is three away from tying the Blue Sox record. Uh, single season record, that is. I have a strong feeling that he's probably going to at least tie. I, I, I'm i with you. That was that ball was just, man. And Almer Conja goes the other way out in the right field. Playable for Jesse Oro. He's got it for the third out. But the good news is a solo homer is tied in here. And we'll go to the third. It's 1-1. One, one. And after... Everyone's favorite part of the week is Thursday because that means it's Thirsty Thursday. Come out to Kelly Automotive Park each Thursday to support your favorite hometown team, the Butler Blue Sox, and enjoy our special concession prices, including $1 draft beers and 50 cent pops. Tickets start at just $7 and can be purchased online at butlerbluesox.net and or by phone at 724-256-9994. Let's go Blue Sox! First baseman, Romero Harris. Ready to go here in the top of the third. 1-1 one, one the score, courtesy of a solo homer from Patrick Ferguson. A solo 
monster homer. And we were ready to go here. Spack against Harris, who walked in his first appearance. Takes a curveball high, I guess. I, I, I'm getting a little perplexed at how pitches in the, in the middle of the plate are being called balls here. 1-0. That one's low. But uh, we were talking off air. This kid, that Freeman, he's throwing some serious gas. Yep. The one way you can count, counteract that is barrel it up because it, there's going to be some exit velocity yeah. on it. Yeah. And I'd love to have seen what the exit velocity was on that. Oh, yeah, number. that ball was absolutely crushed. I mean, obviously, we don't have the stat cast like the no. MLB Network no. or Not anything yet. like that. Give it time. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> I mean, I would love to see that off the bat. And he did. Uh, Ferguson did exactly what you're supposed to do against a guy like, uh, like, like, um, oh goodness, Freeman. Uh, Freeman. There we go. I almost called him Ferguson too, but he <laughs> did. It, he did exactly what you're supposed to do. You just, you shorten your stride up a little bit and, and take a good swing, good level swing. You did it, and we see what happens. Yeah, healthy cut by Harris, who comes up empty. That's a 2-0 swing. Now it's a 2-1 count. Spacks ready to go. Here's pitch. It's blowing outside. You have all, I will say this, the umpire seems to have a very tight strike zone for, for SPAC, but he's also not locating very well. Uh, he just seems to be struggling with f his command here, and he misses again, ball four, leadoff walk. He's walked four now, one strikeout, no five, I beg your pardon. The hey, I missed the one at the top of the second inning. Yeah, and normally, you know, you, you if you're SPAC, you, uh, if, you're, if you're struggling to locate, you know, you rely on some pitches that are close for the umpire to help you out a little bit. Obviously, uh, he's not getting the benefit of the doubt on some high strikes or some high pitches that could be called strikes. Um, you know, he's got to rely on throwing the ball low, which he hasn't been able to do yet. And the only pitches he's thrown consistently close are the, the pitches that are high that are being called balls at this point in the game. Now throw over, Harris back standing up. Yeah, it's just, it's been a, it's been a battle. Bukowitz at the plate. Here's the 1-0. A little bit high, I, he's just getting frustrated. You can just tell, every, after every pitch he's like, man, that, that was good. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's just got to get it down uh, a little yeah. bit, you know. It's it's right around belt high. Actually, he needs to get it down a little bit further than yeah, well, because then yeah. it'll be <laughs> it'll be dead red. That's true. That one looked. What the world was that? That was right there. <laughs> I I think he might have a vendetta against them. <laughs> he's just not seeing it. I I it look, that looked really good. Am I, am I crazy? No, I, I don't know. 3-0. Oh, slow roll calls the strike. Three one. That one was low. Ball four. And that's back to back walks. This is another time where I wouldn't mind seeing Forbes make another appearance here because it's it's I don't know. It's, it's, it's just, just things are not going for, well, f or at all for SPAC. It's just not going his way. Yeah, no, I mean, everything uh, that, that has, that could possibly have gone wrong so far has. I mean, he's walked six guys now and, you know, only given up the one hit, but it was a triple that later came around to score. I will say this. He could, it could have gone a lot worse for him. There's a bunt right back to him. He fields it. Nobody's covering the bag. Now Maglione gets there and not in time. That's a bunt single on a sacrifice attempt. But really, so it was miscommunication because Maglione should have been there to cover the bag. I don't know if they would have got him. It was close. Yeah, I, I don't know if, if Maglione went towards second uh, to try to cover the bag there or what it was, but Ferguson was coming, yeah. so someone has so to go cover first base, and yeah. obviously... Maglione's the guy, but uh, just, I mean, he has a long way to run uh, yeah. from over from second base. That bunt 
uh, was, was put in a pretty good spot as well. Spack looked up like, well, nobody there. Now a ground ball pass. Gulikowski was playing in. They're going to wave the other runner home. Throw is up the line. Oh, it hit him. That's even worse. Now the ball gets away. Both runners move up. And uh, it's just going from bad to worse here. It's now 3-1. to one. Oh, man. That was a well-hit ball by Willis to get that uh, fast. The Gulikowski was playing in, but I, I don't know if he would have even got that if he was playing back. Yeah, that ball was hit pretty well and pretty hard. Uh, and Gulikowski did have to dive to his right to try to make a play on it. Couldn't do it. And then, uh, you know, a strong throw out there by Merkonja. Uh, was up the line a tad and then hits uh, the runner right in the back. Would have liked to see what would have happened if it didn't hit him in the back there. But uh, nonetheless, uh, now Spack's got to try to work his way out of trouble again. Called strike, going two to Jesse Oro. And nobody out, and the chance for the Kings, or the, sorry, the, the Jackrabbits to put up a big number here. Big pitch, 0-2, try to get a strikeout. Oh, no, they're not gonna get one, but they will get it now as this ball is popped into center field. Carew's underneath it. And the throw will go to the cutoff man, and coming in to score is Troyer to make it now four to one. Kokomo. A good job there by Jesse Oro. Um, just putting that ball in play, not trying to do a lot with it. That's good situational hitting, and, and uh, now a uh, 4 1 lead. Yeah, you spot, now they spotted Freeman a three run lead here. Yeah. Now here's Schwing, runner takes off, throw from Gonzalez is not gonna beat him at the stolen base for Willis, good jump out there. He he took off as well, uh, Spack threw his leg up in the air. Yeah, and, and they've gotten good reads off of Spack tonight. There was another stolen base uh, in the first inning uh, by Jared Watkins that he went, I mean, right, I mean, before he even put his leg up in the air and result, resulted in a steal, so. Now they're timing him up well. Called strike here, one and one. Still only one out. So another fly ball would bring, most likely bring in another run. One, oh, swing. Uh, he's not cheated, he t swings and misses though. Swing goes to Cincinnati. He's listed at six foot two twenty. Time called. And here's the one two. Swing and a miss, strike three. Spack second K of the evening. Now in, number six, the shortstop, Andrew Curran. He goes down swinging and that brings up Curran. Sacrifice fly to right field in his first at bat. That scored swing. Broke open the scoring tonight. And got Willis at third. And Spack's ready to go. Called strike on a breaking pitch. Is that a little better location, but still a little bit too far up. Yeah, the pitch is right around thigh high, and you know, with a with a breaking pitch, you want to be more near the knees. That was a good pitch, but called a ball. <sighs> Might have been just a tick off the plate. It was right there at the knees, though. Yeah, it was a darn good pitch. It's a pitcher's pitch right where you want it, right at the knees, off the plate a little bit. Normally, umpires will give you that call. Pitch out. 
outside, and now a throw to third. Oh, man, that could have been trouble. Gulikowski got some hops out there. <laughs> Keep that ball from going down into the left field. I understand what they were trying to do there, but uh, that could have been disaster. Two one, ground ball to third. Gulikowski has it. His throw will retire Kern and end the inning. Uh, Jack Rabbits get three on two hits, uh, no errors, and leave one on base. On to the bottom half of the third inning. Kokomo four, Butler one. Christian Webb, ready to go here in the third. Kokomo four, Butler one. Quincy down four nothing to Springfield in the bottom of the first. Terre Haute and West Virginia scoreless in the top of the third. And Chillicothe leads Champion City two nothing in the top of the fourth. Uh, Webb will line a single out in the right field. That's a good way to start the third inning. Uh, Danville and Lafayette rained out this evening. It's been a rough week of rain outs. Not here, thankfully, but in the middle part of the league. And Christian Webb uh, continuing a nice ball game from last night. Went two for four last night in his first at bat. Continues it. A nice single. And that's, as you said, Jaron, a good way to get things started. Gets a runner on early. Um, and runs are going to be hard to come by, obviously, against Freeman. Magleon fouls it off. He had the night off last night. This is Malone out in Canton, native of Uniontown, Ohio. Came in the second week of the season. So one Magalone swing to miss his ball goes to the backstop. And Webb will move up on the wild pitch. That was one where he was looking at the fastball, and he, he broke off a curveball that went about 55 feet. Yeah, and, uh, you know, as we said, that's what's going to happen when you have a pitcher out there um, pitching as well as William Freeman is uh, thus far in the game. Other than that one pitch to uh, Ferguson, he's really been dominant, and uh, that's what you got to do. you got to try to uh, mix things up against these hitters. Otherwise, they'll start timing up the fastball, and, He's done a good job of mixing uh, his breaking pitches and, and his fastball in together. 0-2, Magalhães fouls it off to stay alive. Almost come back down and hit the ump in the head. And that that uh, pitch that got to the backstop there, that's, that's big for uh, the Blue Sox because now all Magalhães has to do is, is put a ball in play here, and you're probably going to move Webb up. Uh, preferably to the right side, it will move him up and you know, a base hit now would score a run, whereas it would put Webb probably at third base or at second. Hey, That'll work. Flare. That'll do it. Out into left field. Webb coming around third. Ball's bobbled out there. And he will score back. Talk about two. Got a good read on the throw in. 
Heads back to first, but he got himself an RBI single at the 4-2 game. Yeah, good job by Butler responding um, after that uh, three-run inning uh, by Kokomo. They come back with a run of their own and still nobody out in the same situation they were when this inning started. Yeah, back to the top of the order, Ben Carew. Freeman staring down Maglione. Pitch crew's gonna bunt, that one goes to the backstop. And that will allow oh, Maglione to head to second. I, actually, I think that, is he rolling out a foul ball? No, I think he okay. put his hands up to call time to look at the ball. I think it went back and bounced off of a pole. That's why I think he, he went okay. to put his hands up to call time. I knew it was close to his bat. Yeah, I, I, he definitely got it out of the way. I, th you know, I, I think home plate. Uh, he, he, well, we're gonna have a mound visit here. I thought for a second there that uh, he was going <laughs> to roll out a foul ball because he, he got his his bat was up there and that ball came in his yeah. head and he kind of went back and the yeah. but he, he must he did a good job getting out of the way yeah. it looked like uh, Mark Schmidt uh, home plate umpire was right he he did confuse me too for yeah. a second he put his hands up I think he was more trying to get out of the way of uh, of Schwing back there behind the plate a little bit too so, I mean that that's the backstop short and it's got those metal pulls behind it too it can tear him off that and bounce around so that's kind of tough for the home plate umpire to just try to yeah. stand in one spot and again another another wild pitch that gets to the backstop and um <laughs> butler's in another good spot here uh, you can move him over or a base hit wouldn't score him yeah yeah it's absolutely right uh Carew looking made to sacrifice himself. Now he doesn't have to do that. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, you still could, but you're exactly right. You don't have to. Might as well let him swing away and see if he can get a hit out of it. Well, he fouls one off his foot. He was kind of one apiece. Another ball out of play. Parks on deck, he hit the ball hard his first time up. Freeman's gonna pause, check second. And come home with a fastball inside. Doesn't back crew up though, he just kinda stood in there and stood his ground as it whizzed by his jersey by Bob Ninch. <laughs> Yeah, that's what you're taught to do as a leadoff hitter, crew knowing that full well. And like we said before, Butler's going to have to get as many guys on base as they can, and I'm sure crew would take a hit by pitch to get on. 2-1, fouled off. Yeah, it's he's done, a, he's done a good job in the leadoff spot when he's been there. The average is not spectacular, but he's worked some walks. He's... Worked a lot of accounts and set up the rest of the order. And plus, he's a guy who is coming in off a red shirt, so he's probably just starting to get into a groove now. Well, that's a good, that's a good job of fighting that pitch off. My goodness, he got that by an inch. Yeah, I don't know how he hit that. It looked like it was in the catcher's <laughs> glove almost. I mean, that thing was behind him, it looked like. But uh, as you said, a uh, good job by Carew. Just shortening the swing up, just trying to put a bat on it, put a ball in play. Um, because we know Maglione's probably, I mean, he's getting a good lead out there, a good secondary lead after <laughs> Freeman delivers to the plate, so almost a, a ball in play would likely move him up. <laughs> that was about as short of a swing as you could have. And uh, now Carew will strike out. That, that in previous one, because it lasted about a millisecond, and yeah. it got a piece of the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Pavid Parks, who is the shortstop tonight moving over giving James Meeker a night off played second last night made a great play in the field and he with that great play he preserved what was a no hitter at that, at that stage in the ball game I think that was yeah in the third inning yeah he ended up going, uh, Bucci took it into the fifth before he gave up a hit Parks takes high. 
Pavin on the summer hitting 346, which is second on the team. He has a couple of home runs, 10 runs batted in. Second on the team, he's only played seven games. It's pretty good. Yeah. Pitch is called a strike. Uh, obviously, Ferguson, the leader. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he had a grand slam out in Danville. He's got 18 runs batted in now for the summer. Webb with, with 10 as well. So these, him and Parks are tied for second. 1-1. One, one. Parks takes away. Also high. Butler hosts West Virginia tomorrow night for fireworks night. There aren't many tickets left, so if you're planning on coming down, better make sure to call the ticket office tomorrow and reserve your seats. And Sunday Father's Day, we got a 135 matinee to close the week. Pitch is outside. Now three and one runner takes oh, off back wow. in. Wow. That is heads up, base running. What a play there by Maglio, and, that's, and, and that can completely change this inning. Uh, Butler now in a very good spot to steal another run, and that's a, that's, that's a stolen base. I mean, that, and he absolutely stole it. Uh, that's, I mean, that's just great heads up baseball, knowing that no one's paying attention to you, knowing that the catcher drops to a knee as soon as he gets that ball. He, not really throwing it back to the pitcher with any authority at all. As soon as that ball caught in the glove, off he went. And they're now gonna, they're, they're going to intentionally walk a guy in the, in the third inning? What? All right. I guess they're going to set up the double play ball. Oh, he got the chicken charge in. Good, good man in there, Lucas. What? Why would you do that? You get caught yeah. here. You're going into the heart of your lineup with yeah. one out. Yeah. It's interesting. I mean, and now, I mean, a double play ball, sure, it does get you out of the inning, but it, there's an extra yeah. guy on base now. Right. Calvin Scott it hit a home run last night. You could yeah. easily tie this game right now. I don't know. That just seems fishy to me. I know it's a 3-1 count, but. Yeah, you don't, well, you don't want to make a mistake there either. Give no. him something, a meatball. Parks takes off, and now throw to third. Almost got thrown into left field. They'll take the stolen base. Now double plays out of the picture. Yeah. Which is all the more reason that it's it's surprising that you would do that, because now uh, you have a, you know, uh, Calvin Scott, who as we mentioned, hit a home run last night. And he hits the ball with authority, and now he's got two guys in scoring position. I, I got to give credit to Mag Leon there. Yeah. He saw he he uh, was just far enough off the bag to force that throw to yeah. third and, and allow Parks to steal the base. I I you know I know what they were going for there. Uh, it's got a little, little chopper that's going to hit at his foot. So that's a foul ball. But uh, they, they were going to try the double steal. Mm -hmm. Magdalene may have shown it a little early, but at the same time, he guaranteed that both runners were going to be on uh, in scoring position there. Yeah, and I don't even know with a good throw if they get paving part. I mean, he took off. Yeah. I mean, he was going. Uh, First know, move. Yeah, exactly. He was going right from the get-go. I don't even know if a good throw gets him. But you're exactly right. It was a good job. Uh, both ways, good both, uh, good base running by both Maglione and Parks. There, it's a, that's good stuff. Yeah. It's, that's a. That, that, I'll tell you what. I gotta give credit to Cody and, and, and Josh. Uh, as the ball gets away, Maglione thought about it, but a good rebound off the netting as it allows Schwing to get it quickly and keep him at keep him at third. But they they really just put the pressure right back on him. Yeah. They, they weren't that intentional. Like you said, they said okay. We're going to steal the base. We're going to take the double play out of the picture. Exactly. Thanks for giving us the free uh, yeah. free base runner. Yeah, and you almost, if you're Kokomo, well, depending on how this batter goes, you're almost thinking, okay, what would have happened if we would have pitched uh, to Ben Carrer, to Paven Parks there, excuse me. Well, here's Scott. He's ready to go. So is Freeman. And the pitch. It's a chopper That'll up work. the middle. Get a run. Yeah, at least get a run in. Throw by Curran is just in time. Runner's coming home, and he is out. Parks tried to try to catch him napping again, and he runs into an out to end the inning. But they do get one. That's a 6-3 ground out and an RBI for Scott. And then Parks is thrown out 6-3-2. And the inning. Well, 
a good thing about it is two runs come across the score, and we'll go to the fourth with Butler down four to three. Well, we're on to the fourth here. It's been an interesting game so far. Kokomo four, Butler three. Butler getting a pair of runs in the last inning. We were just talking off air how uh, that was a potential for a double play ball yep. there. If they're not aggressive with Parks, then uh, yeah, the, on the back end, it may be a little too aggressive going home on yeah. the ground out. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. with a guy like we, we've been talking about how well Fr Freeman is throwing, a credit to, uh, to the Butler Blue Sox thus far. They have, they have hit him well. But uh, we've we seen in the, in the first inning and into the second inning that he can be pretty dominant and, and knowing that I'm assuming that that Parks kind of had the green light to be aggressive he never stopped I watched him the whole way he, he ran as hard as he could rounding the bases and um, you know thought he could beat him obviously was out by a good <laughs> a good margin in home plate but uh, you never know that could force a bad throw and you score a run and it ties the ball game up you never know yeah well here's Fegan he pops it out of play he's down 0-2 Yeah, I, 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 I guess I'm, I'm all right with the aggressiveness because it worked on one end. It's not going to work every time, but no. Yeah. But uh, you know, you're right. You could force a bad throw from the first baseman. First basemen aren't known for their arms. Yeah, and, and you don't <laughs> even. It, it kind of looked like it was going to work for a second. Uh, the first baseman um, for Kokomo Harris, he caught it kind of with his head down. He really wasn't looking. Is a strike three there? Swing and a miss. Feeding. Goes down swinging. But as I was saying, Harris caught it with his head down a little bit. And he, you know, yeah. you have to, if, if everyone's yelling 4 4, you got to get up, you got to make a quick throw. And, you know, almost caught him napping there. Yeah. But he he did get the throw in, and he did get get the final out of the inning to preserve a one run lead. And a foul ball by Watkins. One, 0 for 1. Uh, walked, st stolen base, and uh, ground out to short. Oh, we'll roller to second, and the play is made by Maglione, two down. Yeah, this is a good inning so far uh, for Bryce Spack. After allowing three uh, three runs in the last inning, he's got to get going a little bit, and uh, one, two, three inning would surely help him. Yeah. Two thirds of the way there. Here's Harris. He's walked twice, scored a run. Fastball. He was right there for a called strike. These, these were balls a couple <laughs> innings ago. Yeah, they definitely were. There's not a doubt about that. Well popped up. This is going to be playable for Maglione and Shallow. Right, he's got it. And just like that. The Jackrabbits are retired here in the fourth. Nice clean inning for Spack. Onto the bottom half, it's 4-3 Kokomo.
It's time for each and every one of us to face a very troubling fact. There exists a significant heroin and opioid epidemic in not only Butler County, but elsewhere across the country. I'm Rich Goldinger, the District Attorney of Butler County. This is my backyard and yours too. Together, we can work to eradicate the high-level drug dealers that supply these drugs to those using them. Heroin and opioid abuse does not discriminate. Users come from all economic backgrounds, are male and female, and may be teenagers or middle-aged adults. With your help and in conjunction with the Butler County Drug Task Force and the Pennsylvania Office of Attorney General, we can target those dealers who bring this poison into our county. Please report any suspicious activity to your local law enforcement agency, the Pennsylvania State Police, or to my office. This is our ballpark. This is our county. This is our backyard. Let's all say, not in my backyard. Please enjoy tonight's Blue Sox game. Kowski ready to go here in the bottom of the fourth. Blue Sox down four to three, but have chipped away two runs last inning. Gulikowski struck out his first time up, and he's going to start with a strike here on a bouncer. Couldn't quite hold up. Jaron Steele joined by Kellen Gursky. It's been one of the more interesting games we've had here <laughs> so yeah. far. Roller foul on the first base side. We've had a little bit of everything. We had a home run. We've had a, a pitcher that's throwing some serious gas. We got, um, we had a, a, a guy in Maglione steal uh, third base with nobody paying attention, nobody paying attention on yeah. the on the Jackrabbits, and we also had an intentional walk. Yeah, this game's been uh, at least through four innings. Uh, well, through three innings. Excuse me, three and a half. Uh, but as you said, one of the more interesting games we've had here at Kelly Automotive Park so far. One, two, misses. Ray Gonzalez on deck. And then Ferguson. That, yeah, pitch outside. Now we got a full count. And, and Gulakowski working a uh, good at bat here. Good. Good job. Um, he was down 0-2 and gets all the way uh, to 3-2. That's exactly what you want here. Keep fighting. And he gets it. Ball four. Good leadoff walk. That's the uh, first free pass surrendered. Well, no, I take that back. He he had an intentional walk. Yeah. So first actual free pass that uh, he is surrendered here tonight, but second overall. And uh, now Gonzalez maybe a little chance uh, bunt situation he's got some good speed might be able to beat something out yeah I w I w that would be what I would guess third base from playing maybe a step or two behind third base I wouldn't be surprised uh, with, a, with a sacrifice bunt here and pitches oh, oh just gets away but swing able to recover and Gulikowski stays put yeah you almost wonder if uh if he gets a better read there, Gulikowski, if he takes off, it was a tough, I mean, he didn't get that far away from Schwing, and I don't know if Gulikowski's all that oof, that fast, but, you know. Almost caught leaning the wrong way there, but he does get back in time. You know, that would have probably been a close play, a yeah. good throw, because it didn't really roll that far away. Maybe not the worst thing that he didn't take off there. Now it's over again. So he's paying attention to him out there. That's for sure. Gulikowski has stolen three bases and he's not been caught this year. In fact, the Blue Sox have 40 on the summer coming in tonight, now 42, and they've only been caught nine times. So they, that's pretty good ratio yeah. there. It's not bad at all. And another throw over there. You know, maybe Kokomo's counting on Butler uh, maybe to do a hit and run here or something, just trying to keep uh, Gulikowski close over there. Wouldn't be a bad idea. 
Oh, that pitch is right there for a called strike. Also, that throwing over like that breaks the rhythm of the batter up too. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. But as we've seen last night, uh, throws over aren't necessarily uh, the safest thing in the world. We saw one go <laughs> all the way to the bat, although it did result in out. Uh, yeah. It did result in an out last night. Swing and a miss. Uh, last night, I was actually with Forbes and, uh, and That's Co right. Cody yeah. switched spots. And Cody said he had a headache, so he decided that he was going to coach first base for a little bit. Well, well he, uh, throw over Gulikowski back again. Uh, and then I think his headache got a little bigger after Forbes <laughs> <laughs> yeah. got the uh, web thrown out at third. So he ended up going back to third base. <laughs> the very next inning, yeah. way, that headache <laughs> went away or got worse uh, pretty quick. One, two, a uh, chopper. This is a double play ball. Six, four, three, double play. Nice turn as Coranda Watkins to Harris, two away. Yeah, it's a good pitch there by Freeman uh, to get Gonzalez to roll over and into, that, into that double play ball. And, yeah, it clears the bases uh, for Patrick Ferguson coming up, which all yeah. the more reason you, we kind of thought the punt would be coming to get another man on um, for Ferguson. Um, you know, so uh, another solo shot would tie the game, whereas, a, you know, uh, a home run would have given Butler the lead. We'll see if he can match what he did the first time. That ball might not have landed yet. <laughs> I think it made it all the way to Evan City. Maybe it might be, you might see it on the way home on your Maybe. drive up uh, I might. 79. I might it see might it. Might be uh, hanging out on the interstate. And that was a curveball to start Ferguson. Not not, not really surprised there. Yeah, he goes back with a fastball. Ooh. Ooh. It's a called strike. Ooh. One one, hard hit ball, but foul. And now I think Ferguson might need a new bat. Eh, maybe not. Sounded like it didn't sound right. Yeah, he didn't get the barrel on it. That's, uh, that's for sure. Still hit it hard though. Yeah. And uh. now now down one two. We talked about this. Uh, Ferguson is a strikeout candidate. Struck out a bunch this year. Prototypical power guy. And here's the one, two. That's, woof. I thought that was going to be strike three, but it was a little bit inside. Yeah, I guess. It <laughs> in, it the eye, in the eyes of the guy who matters. Yeah, it looked pretty middle-middle <laughs> there, although <laughs> I guess we can call it a good take by Patrick yeah, Ferguson, well, I guess. Yeah, it is in, in hindsight. Two, two, and now ball hit the center field fairly well. Willis on the run. Oh, wow, He's nice got catch. it. Well, he hit it to the wrong part of the park. That was at least two, maybe three, taken away by Willis in center field. What a nice catch out there. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left on base. Through four, it's Kokomo four and Butler three. Onto the fifth here in 
Butler, Kokomo leading four to three. I'm Jaron Steele, joined by Kellen Gursky and uh, Patrick Ferguson. Almost found himself with his ninth homer of the summer, but unfortunately hit at the center field. Even even Paul Bunyan himself uh, probably c couldn't hit one out of center field or, or uh, Babe Ruth or J Josh yeah. Gibson or any of them guys. That, the center field here is so deep. Yeah, 425 to dead center. He probably hit it about 395, uh, maybe more. Yeah. Uh, it went into a full sprint out there. Uh, did Willis to go get it and a nice over-the-shoulder catch. Um, but, yeah, if he hits it to any other part of the park, it's gone, and there's no doubt about it. Got to give Willis a lot of credit. That's a lot of ground to cover, and yeah. he covered it well. <laughs> no doubt about it. I mean, he knew it was over his head as soon as it was hit. He, he turned and had an absolute sprint right to the spot to go get it. Um, I, I, all right. Anyway, it's three and one here. Kids are having a good time. That that's always a plus. Yeah. <laughs> oh, pop up! That's gonna just make it over top of us. Kellen was ready. You gotta bring your gloves the next time you. No, do no, no, no! I'll catch it with my hands. All right. I don't need a glove. Some. Uh, the, I'll tell you, the one night I needed one because it went. It hit right there. And uh, it was uh, full speed. <laughs> it, it hit there and it ended up going back out on the field to play. That was pretty scary. That was three years ago. There's a ball four, and Bukowitz is on board with the no, leadoff no, block. That's no, the third baseman, Sam Troyer. Second time tonight that he has led the inning off with a walk, SPAC, that is. Now he's going to go out and have a talking to from Forbes. This is the second time that he's gone out there and and talk to him. We got a, looks like we're going to make a pitching change here. The right hander was warming in the pen. And here he comes. I think it's Meeker. It is Meeker. He's going to come in for SPAC. So. And this new pitcher is brought to you by. Four plus from SPAC tonight. He allows, well, he's responsible for the runner on, but currently he has four runs and all of them are earned. Only allowed three hits, but the problem is he's allowed a litany of walks, seven, and he struck out three. James Meeker, a right-hander from the University of Delaware, two way player, shortstop and pitcher. He went to North Allegheny High School down Wexford, mm -hmm. just down route, just down route eight. And on the summer, we'll get some numbers for you on Meeker. He has pitched in two games out of the pen, two innings, allowed one hit, one run, one earned run. One walk, three strikeouts, has a save to his credit and a 4.5 earned run average. Yeah, kind of a small sample size yeah. for Meeker, and I'm sure uh, co the pitching coach Jason Ford, or Josh Ford, my goodness, yeah. I keep doing Two in that. A row. <laughs> I keep doing that. We, kept, we talked about his little brother last night, goodness. Um, but yeah, you know, you're expecting a, uh, probably a good amount of innings out of Meeker, um, probably three or, probably three-ish, three-ish innings, three or four. Uh, to get you to about the eighth inning or seventh inning, um, you know, and uh, you know you got you got to hope Meeker can, you know, uh, somehow figure out the strike zone because that's been uh, it's been a uh, a struggle tonight to find <laughs> to find the strike zone. Now, first guy you're gonna face is Sam Troyer. He had a bunt single, uh, miscommunication in the infield between Maglione and uh, Spack. In fact, Spack looked up the throw and there was just nobody there and Maglion late to cover the bag allowed him to reach first pitch is a strike Troyer also a strikeout in the first Spack's angry strikeout if you recall back to the first inning throw to first ooh forced uh, Ferguson to get down a hockey goalie type save keep that ball from going by him Butterfly. Oh, one foul out of stadium. Ouch. 
Now Meeker's got him where he wants him, 0-2, and here's the delivery. It's a, well, a little number to the Blue Sox dugout. Just barely got a piece of it. Yeah, good pitch. That might have been an off-speed pitch there uh, by Meeker. Had Troyer way out in front, uh, and as you said, that number off the end of the bat. And um, actually, it probably would result in a positive uh, for yeah. Kokomo. It probably would have moved the runner up. Ooh, just outside. Yeah, you're right. That, that would have <laughs> it would have been tough for Gonzalez to throw the runner out at second. They would have taken their medicine on that one. Four runs, three hits for Kokomo, and now a double play ball candidate here. It's six, four, three, Parks to Maglione, to Ferguson, a double play. Yep, and that's exactly what the doctor ordered. A, a great pitch there by Meeker. And uh, two hopper right over there to short to Parks and an easy 6-4-3 double play. Brings up Willis. Two RBI single in the third. That is the difference at this point. A foul ball into the net. Here it comes into the first row. No, oh, fastball just outside. One, one, same spot, same result. Wow. And Meeker didn't like that one. Did a, a full 360 out there on the mound. Uh, yeah, he's like, where do I have to put it? Yeah. Do I have to put it right in the, in the hot zone? Yeah, it looked, call it a looked, strike? That looked right in the hot zone, to be honest with you. Yeah, it looked about true. thigh high. 2-1. Okay, I guess the third time he throws it, he'll get yeah. a strike out of it. <laughs> oh, two, two count. Two outs, nobody aboard. And the pitch is lined in the center field. Carew's got a read on it. Coming in, makes the catch to end the inning. Well, we've played four and a half here, and Kokomo leads 4-3. Stefan Mercanja leads off the bottom half of the fifth inning. Butler down four to three, but have chipped away. They were down four one at one point. Had a couple runs in the third. William Freeman has been solid. Mercanja fouls the first pitch off. Webb on deck. He singled and scored in the third. And he said, uh, right before we come back on, he said, bottom of the order coming up. Worked well last time. Yeah. Yeah, two hits coming out of the uh, seven, eight, nine spot. Uh, spots, I should say. Yeah, pitch outside. Mercanja bats right but throws lefty. We saw that last night out of the pen. Yeah, it was very good out of the pen, too. One, one. Ooh. Outside as well. Try to draw a leadoff walk here. Two 
two one. No, that will go to the, through the legs of Wyatt Schwing. A little reenactment of Pecorine in the <laughs> Stanley Cup final. Three one is a called strike on the outside corner. Merconja thought it was a little bit off the outside corner, but I thought it was a good pitch. Yeah, it was a pretty good spot there. Three one, just trying to throw a strike, and now Merconja's gonna have to battle. Got two strikes on him. And called strikeout, and had to complete the strikeout by throwing down the first. The umpire making all kinds of mo motions out there. I didn't know if he was rolling that a dead ball. <laughs> yeah, I, that, was, yeah that, was that was strange uh, as heck. That was. He said no, no, like real loud, and it made Merconja turn around and look, kind of thinking that it was a foul ball. They got a piece of it, but obviously that wasn't the case. Strikeout swing two through. Here's Webb. He'll take outside. One zero line shot to short on a hop, fielded deep in the hole, throw to first by Curran. He got him. Wow. That's that's one of them situations where the ball hits the edge of the turf and that can cause all kinds of problems where it meets the grass. But yeah, he got a good hop and he did a good job of throwing him out. Yeah, they're playing him deep. Uh, they're out there at, at shortstop uh, was Curran and he got it on a one, one hop and that's a long throw. Webb almost beat that out. That was a a good play there. Um, and Webb hit the ball hard. Gotta give him credit as well. Pitches upstairs to uh, Maglione. A little flare out in the left field. And they drove in a run. Drove in Webb. And now chopper to short. Curran ranging over. Throws to first. Oh <laughs> my goodness. What a play by Andrew Curran. What a pair of plays by Curran to end this inning. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, well, we'll go to the six with Kokomo ahead, four to three. to go here in the sixth inning. Ground ball by Jesse Uro to Maglione. 4-3 put out to begin it. One pitch, one down for Meeker here. Blue Sox come in tonight in second place in the Prospect League East Division at eight and seven while uh, Kokomo is in fourth at six and eight. So early season, everybody kind of bunched up. 
Just four games separates first from last in both divisions. Here's Wyatt Sh Wings. He's apparently a switch hitter because he's batting from the left side now. And he takes a ball. Oh, uh, no, that's a strike. I beg your pardon. Let's see if he, yeah, no, no, he's a right hand. Look at this. They have him as a right handed hitter on their, they must have, uh, he's definitely hitting from the left side here. <laughs> well, he, he hits one down into his foot. Call me crazy, but I think he's a switch hitter. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> that was a healthy hack, that's yeah, for sure. That's, uh, he does not get cheated. No, no, not at all. What? Oh, okay. I was going to say, it <laughs> confused me for a second. They walked over to the right-handed batter's box for a second. I was going to say, is he going to try to... I was going to say, I don't enough think of, Enough of this left-handed stuff. Yeah, Let's I go was, back to I the right. I was confused there for a second, but... Oh two. Ooh. Ooh. That was just a little bit inside. Just just a tad. Yeah, Meeker wanted that one. You can tell. Schwing's still smarting from that foul ball off his foot. He just kicked his foot around again. One two misses high. That's a good spot as well. Looked like a breaking ball there from Meeker. Yeah, that's no oh, foul ball straight back. Yeah, that's Meeker actually pitched a lot out of the bullpen for Delaware this spring. Made a couple of starts too, so he's got a pretty good re repertoire. And interesting about Meeker, he's one of the guys that uh, starts in the stretch even with no one on. Um, you see that actually more and more um, with and another close pitch for a ball, but. You see a lot of guys now. I don't know what it is. They don't go to the traditional windup. And that's more guys, I guess, out of the pen that do that. But mm, pitch low for ball four. One out walk. Swing on base for the second time. I feel like uh, the umpire just said some. Well, I not feel like I know the umpire just said something. To Ray Gonzalez, as if to say, "Hey, you better go out there and talk to him because I'm tired of him doing 360s after every ball call." And my reply to him would be, "Well, maybe call some strikes that are, yeah. that are in the zone." I mean, he threw three pitches in a row that were right on the edge or just off, and normally you get that call. I mean, <laughs> he really didn't do anything. He just walked around the mound. It's not no. like he said anything to the home plate umpire, or showed him up. So I'm confused why the home plate umpire would. I mean, like, like, what know. other message would he have said to him there? He yeah. just turned around. He, he stood in front of Ray, facing his back facing the pitcher, and, and gave him some sort of speech. And then Ray went out and relayed the message. Well, from ball. from yeah. what I, I – it's tough to read lips, but uh, I'm pretty sure he said at the end, he said, you go tell him now. I heard – I saw now at the very end, so, no. Yeah, you're probably right. You're probably just going to better tell him to calm down. No one. Nope. Meeker steps off. I was. I know you haven't seen this movie, but I know a lot of people probably have out there. Naked Gun. Um, Leslie Nielsen. And ball fouled out to play. Uh, our home plate umpire is a spitting image of him. Uh, at the end of the movie, he goes out. He's a secret agent, but he's out. He's the home plate umpire at Dodger Stadium, and he. Makes a complete mockery of the game before he <laughs> ends, up <laughs> ends up catching the guy at the end. But, uh, yeah, he that's who he rem reminds me of, s standing back there. 0-2, line drive to center. Carew coming in, slides, and makes nice a catch. fantastic catch out there in center. That was a really nice catch. It looked like the off the bat that was going to be trouble because it was a sinking liner into shallow center, but he uh, used his speed and some little slide. And that's about the third or fourth time I've seen Ben do that this summer. Yeah, and the defense, um, again, playing pretty well thus far. I do have that one error on uh, a caught stealing, but um, other than that, I mean, the defense play, that was a heck of a sliding catch there. You never know how much that could impact. Um, you know, an inning or, or a game, and if that ball gets down, um, it's a sinking liner, could get past them as well. 
Pitch low, good block by Gonzalez. Check swing, looks him back to the bag, but decided better of trying to throw a snap down there. 2-0 count to Fegan. Now it's a called strike. Pokemo has taken more pitches tonight than I think any team I've seen this summer. They are, they are very disciplined this evening. 2-1, foul ball, look out. It made it all the way over the Dubrook building on, wow. the, on the hop, but uh, Derek, you okay down there? You good, you good? <laughs> okay, good. That, yeah, that was, it gave, a, gave you a buzz cut there. Oh. My goodness, I don't know how that didn't hit off of anything. I know, I was I was prepared for the, the rebound. Yeah. But thankfully, nothing there. Now a little roller to shortstop. Oh, P Parks drops it, recovers, throws the first, and they got him. That could have been uh, trouble if, if they allowed the runner to reach there, but Parks does a good job recovering, firing the first to end the inning. And we'll catch our breath, maybe. Uh, Talk a little bit about how we almost uh, had to go to the hospital there. <laughs> we'll go to the bottom of the sixth inning with Kokomo ahead 4-3. All right, back with you, living to tell about it after a close call last inning. We're in the bottom of the sixth inning. We're at the top of the order with the Blue Sox down four to three. Just three hits apiece for tonight. I mean, uh, pitchers have had the, their way at times, and other times there's been a, it's been a walk fest. But overall, the damage has been limited in almost every inning, and that's why it's a four-three score. Carew pulls a bunt back, takes a called strike. I th that's one way you can get the home point umpire to call a strike is if you put you put your bat out for a bunt. Yeah. Other than that, it's a it's a guessing game at this point. And we all have rough n evenings. That pitch a little bit outside. Freeman still throwing gas, but this that time he comes with a curveball. Carew thinking gas swings through it. Yeah, and that's the one thing that, that Freeman's been able to do consistently tonight. He has been keeping these Butler Blue Sox hitters off balance. He's throwing, mixing in a lot of curveballs. They're thinking fastball, and he's going to the curveball. There yeah. it was again. Yep, yeah. ball gets away. Carew will race down to first. Throw will beat him, though, from Schwing. Another K for Freeman. There's a half dozen at this point. Yeah, and three of them are uh, Ben Cruz striking out. Yeah, he's got a hat trick, unfortunately. Parks is at the plate. He walked intentionally back in the third inning. And here's 
misses the pitch from Freeman. Parks takes away. Calvin Scott on deck. And then after him, it's uh, Gulikowski if we get that far. one -oh. There's a strike on a swinging strike on another curveball. Uh, Freeman's been getting that curveball in a little bit more here as of late. That's something that you would, you th I feel like you would want to establish early, especially with your fastball, but it seems like he's been, oh my, here's a nice fastball for called strike two. Schwing throws down to third. A little bit, a little bit early, a little premature here. Not a strikeout. <laughs> third baseman got the ball and looked at him for a solid 10 seconds before he, before he <laughs> threw the ball to the pitcher. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Troyer. <laughs> Troyer's like, what are you doing? He, uh, he wasn't expecting it. He just happened to look up and catch it. Parks fouls it off of the mask of Schwing. Uh, if he was, if he, he if he wasn't paying attention the whole time, it might have hit him. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't a punt. I was, that's why I was confused for a second because he threw it down. I was like, he only gave the motion of a, you know, he just kind of pointed yeah. for the strike. He didn't do like the whole punch out or anything. No. That's what I was, I was going to say. That's the guy's punch out. That's a whole different story. Another one, two. Park strikes out. Schwing will have to throw down the first, and he'll do so. That's the third time in a row that... The strikeout has been a uh, throw down the first to complete it. But regardless, that's seven strikeouts now for Freeman, who just seems to be getting stronger. He's retired now uh, seven in a row. Yep. And has not, row. has not a lot of hits since the third inning. Just the one walk is the only guy who's been on base. He was raced on a double play ball. Calvin Scott ready to go. Oh, broken bat flare to center field. That's going to get down for a base hit. You can see the wood flying off the bat, and but it didn't matter. He got enough of it, muscled it out there for a base hit. Yeah, that bat is uh, definitely broken. There's a piece of uh, wood that the catcher's ha handing over to the ball girl, and you're exactly right. He got sawed off there, but strong enough to muscle it out and uh, gets a guy on base here. Yeah, back goes down to Hero. Yeah, that's right. Get the last crack out of it yeah. for a base hit. Uh, two down here is Gulikowski. One for, or for one. He walked. Now throw to first. Scott stole three bases last night. Also hit a home run. See if he's on the move here again. Yeah, as you said, Scott with three steals last night. One away from tying a team record. Yeah, different battery tonight, though, than last night. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, but that, that that's a good point. Yeah. Uh, uh, the Blue Sox haven't really run as much as they did last night. Uh, they haven't had a lot of base runners either. That's true. Yeah, yeah. That's a good point. <laughs> that's a very but you're right. They did steal one base tonight, and that was uh, Parks on the double, not double steal, but they attempted, I think, was going to be a uh, delayed double steal at third by Maglione. But well, two steals if you count what yeah. Maglione did. Oh, that's true. He's actually got two stolen bases. Yeah. Uh, Park, well, Parks and then uh, Maglione. Yeah. yeah. He trucked the third, and then the intentional walk, and then the, the other stolen base pitch out. Low and inside, 1-0 and oh to Gulikowski from North Carolina State, Shark Tears Valley High School down south of Pittsburgh. Good foul ball. Swing. Yeah, good swing straight back. All right, the Jackrabbits come in seven. Oh, or I'm sorry, the Jackrabbits leave. The Miners come in seven oh five start, and it is a fireworks night. Jake Stout is the probable for the Blue Sox. Pitch inside, throw down the second, and they got him. Good throw by Schwing. And a tag applied by Curran to end the inning. We'll go to the seventh with Butler trailing four to three.
Everyone's favorite part of the week is Thursday because that means it's Thirsty Thursday. Come out to Kelly Automotive Park each Thursday to support your favorite hometown team, the Butler Blue Sox, and enjoy our special concession prices, including $1 draft beers and 50 cent pops. Tickets start at just $7 and can be purchased online at butlerbluesocks.net and or by phone at 724-256-9994. Let's go Blue Sox! Top of the seventh here in Butler, Kokomo leading four to three. James Meeker gets a strike here. Watkins is 0 for two. Ground out, fair ground outs and a walk. A little grounder here. Gulikowski fields, throws the first, one away. Now he's he's grounded out to short, second, and third. So he's giving everybody a little infield practice tonight. That ball was in on, on his hands and he barely was able to get enough on it to get it out that far and good job by Gulikowski coming in to make the play. Yeah, that thing had some wicked spin on it. Might have broken the bat of Watkins as well. Yeah, it was way in on the hands. Yeah, it was a heck of a pitch and Watkins tried to fist it out there, just couldn't get enough on it. Harris takes a ball. He is 0 for 1. Pair of walks and a run scored. Called strike here. Take a quick look and see what's going on around the league in a second. Here's the pitch. Ooh, swing and a miss on a curveball that was about a 58 footer and trampoline to the backstop. West Virginia five, Terre Haute nothing in the top of the six. Nine five, Springfield over Quincy in the bottom of the third. And Chillicothe three, Champion City two in the top of the eighth. Of course, uh, Danville and Lafayette rained out this evening, postponed to June 23rd. And a swing and a miss, strike three. Meeker gets his first K of the ball game. He's done a good job out of the pen coming in, working the third inning of relief, and he's kept the score to where the Blue Sox can. Uh, yeah, they're right there. Yeah. And another run ties it. He's done a good job of keeping this thing close. Here's Bukowitz. He's walked all three times he's been up. Strike one. Yeah, and you hit it on the head uh, with Meeker. He has been good uh, through these three innings of work. And, um, you know, we, 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 we thought that he would have to go multiple innings, three or maybe even four. Um, you know, to, um, you know, only four innings out of uh, Bryce Spack, the starter for Butler tonight. But we, we expected Meeker to, to go multiple innings, and so far he's done he's done very well. 1-1, one, one, called strike. Yeah, he has been a good uh, stopper here. He's kept the, kept the Blue Sox right in it and really just shown what he can do out of the pen. Bouncer in to... Gonzalez. He's only allowed two base runners since he's come in. Ooh, ooh, that pitch just missed. Three and two. Okay, 
Payoff upcoming. Here it is from Meeker. It's to the backstop, ball four. Yeah, two out walk. Yeah, they tried maybe a little too much on that one. Just lost the handle. Now batting number 11, the third baseman, Sam. Yeah, you know, you're in a full count and know you got to throw a strike if you're Meeker. Don't want to put anyone on for three. Kind of overthrew that one, as you mentioned there, Jaron, and results in a walk. Jackrabbits are managed by Gary McClure. His first season, taking over from Matt Howard. Swing and a miss here from Troyer. One for three. Round into a double play his last time up. Will not do that here for sure with two down. And pitch, a called strike, going two. Now the batters are looking at the umpire like, come on. Yeah, the zone has, uh it's definitely changed. It's gotten wider. Yeah, definitely, as this game has <laughs> gone on. It could get any smaller. Runner takes off, throw down from Gonzalez. is not in time. A close call at second, but give Bukowitz a stolen base. Tag was there from Parks. It just was just a little bit late. Yeah, and it was a good jump uh, by Bukowitz. Um, no one was paying attention to him. Had a monster lead, just took off, and, um, you know, uh, it's just heads up base running by Bukowitz there. One two foul ball by Troyer. Willis on deck. One two popped in the center. Should be playable for Ben Carew. He's underneath it, got it, and we'll go to stretch time here at Kelly Automotive Park. It is Kokomo four and Butler three. So let's all stand up and sing, take me out to the ball game. William Friedman out to work the seventh inning. The first guy he'll face is Brady Gulikowski. 4-3, the Jackrabbits are on top right now. Gulikowski with a chopper to second. And that's to Watkins. On to Harris, 4-3 goes Gulikowski to begin the seventh. That's a good start for Freeman. Um, obviously trying to, uh, knowing that uh, Ferguson's coming up uh, in this inning, he's due up uh, third in the inning. Um, Knowing that he's try gonna have to try to get the two guys out in front of Ferguson, you definitely don't want to have anyone on base when he comes up to the plate with the power that he's had. He's hit two absolute bombs, although one was to the deepest part of the park here. And what was that in the fourth inning? 
And here's a pitch to Gonzalez. It's a called strike. So outside of Scott's hit last inning, the Blue Sox have not had a hit since the third inning. And Kokomo has also not had a hit since the third inning. Oh, heads up there. Yeah, oh, geez. Nobody, nobody harmed, though, <laughs> thankfully. We had a heads up earlier. Yeah, we did. <laughs> Got a couple inches shaved off my head, I think. <laughs> One, one, Gonzalez with a hard grounder to third. Nice pick from the third baseman, Troyer. Throw to first, Ooh. a good pick on the other end wow. from Harris. And uh, that two picks, one out. Five, three goes, Gonzalez, two down, and here's, here's Ferguson. Maybe the, maybe the at-bat of the game here for Butler, because uh, the, way, the way this is going, yeah. this will be his last time up unless you know, they start putting a lot of guys on base, because He's only batted twice tonight, in the uh, second and the fourth. Uh, chopper, fielded by Curran, throw to first, and that's a quick end of the inning there, about a four pitch inning for Freeman. We're gonna go to the eighth with Kokomo leading four to three. Top of the eighth, nice night in Butler, good crowd, good ball game, 4-3 Kokomo. Three hits for the Jackrabbits, only four for the Blue Sox. Uh, been some walks in there, a few walks, but for the most part, pitchers have had the upper hand since Meeker's come in. Uh, Spack, he, uh, he had seven walks, but, but uh, Freeman's been dealing as of late. Swinging a miss here from Williams. Willis, I beg, beg your pardon, to begin the eighth. It's actually kind of incredible that Spack walked seven, yet only gave up four runs. It just, you know, you don't see that a whole lot. Yeah, well, he had the bases loaded in the first and got yeah. out of it. Yeah. And um, that was, he, he also had a situation in the third where he had runner on third base with just one out and got a strike out in the ground out to get out of it. So even though he didn't have the best control tonight, he kept the Blue Sox from uh, you know being in a situation where they're down by eight or nine runs. Uh, ball hit the center field, that'll get down for a base hit and that's the first hit for the Jackrabbits since the third inning. Fourth of the night. And just uh, looking at it, looked like um, looked like Carew out there didn't really get a, a good read off the bat. He, his first step was back. That's what you're supposed to do. He didn't really come in after that. I think he thought it was uh, sinking a lot faster than it was. A play he probably could have made. Runner goes. Throw down to second. They got him. They got him at second. Gonzalez to Magaloon and gone is Willis. What you talking about? You a talking caught about? stealing. <laughs> what you talking about, Willis? That's a big out there after the leadoff man gets on. I think that was a hit and run. It was. He swung and missed it, uh, Jesse Oro. 
And now he's gonna pop one in the foul territory. Ferguson giving it a look, but that'll fall near the Blue Sox bullpen. Jesse Oro is 0 for 3, but he does have a sacrifice fly for an RBI that scored uh, Bukowitz back in the third inning. James Meeker will step off here. 0-2 with one out after the stolen base attempt was foiled by Gonzalez and Maglione. Oh, ground ball to third. Gulikowski has it, and the throw is in time. <laughs> Five three goes Jesse Oro, and with two outs, that brings in Wyatt Schwink. Meeker, ready to go. Here's the pitch. Oh, fooled him. Schwing, living up to his name. He likes to take big cuts, big squigs. Yeah, no doubt about it. He's taking some some hacks out there, some daddy hacks is what uh, the kids are <laughs> calling them nowadays. Well, that was another one, but unfortunately, he's getting nothing but air. Yeah, that's true. Well, that's, that's the risk you run when, yeah. when daddy hacking. Is, yeah. I guess that would be <laughs> the verb of that. I don't know. Yeah, who knows? Here's the upcoming offering from, oh, he got him again. Swing and a miss. All three, as uh, Kellen el eloquently put it, daddy hacks, and he goes up with nothing. No runs, one hit, no errors, no one left on base. Bob of the eighth coming up with the Jackrabbits leading four to three. William Freeman is out there for the eighth. Foul ball by Mercon should begin it. Pokemon leading four to three, four hits a piece, one error for the Blue Sox, none for the Jackrabbits. And they've made some solid defensive plays. A uh, couple of last inning, a, a pick at third by Troyer and then a pick on the other end by Harris. low to Mercanja. In this situation, you're ahead 2-1. You're 
you're going to want to probably try to draw a leadoff walk here or just get on base any way you yeah. can. Take Down a run. Yeah, yeah, take anything at this point. Whoa, oh, geez, Cody. My goodness. We thought we had a scare. That was a little. Uh, that might, have been, that uh, might be more. Of a, that was definitely more of a scare yeah. than what we had. That was right at him. Yeah. <laughs> that was either get. That was either get out of the way or get hit by one of the two. Pitch outside, and now we got a full count. This is a big at bat here for the Blue Sox. Uh, Seven, eight, nine, do up, and as we talked about uh, in the in the fifth inning, Webb and Maglione do have uh, singles to their credit tonight. So if Merconja could reach here, it would be it would be big. Oh, he got him with a called strike three in the outside edge. Merconja can't believe it. Eight Ks for Freeman. Jackrabbits do have double barrel action going on in their bullpen right now. Here's the pitch to Webb, who misses, misses high. Webb singled and scored in the third. And also has the ground out. This is only third at bat of the game. We're in the eighth inning. Called strike one and one. It seemed like it was going to be a high-scoring affair. You know, if it was 4-3 after, what, the third inning, you kind of thought that it was going to be a high-scoring game. But ever since that third inning, things have just died down. Called strike again. Freeman. Just short of 100 pitches. A little chopper. Could be... Trouble, backhanded, throw is high, that should, yeah, he beat it. The throw is high by Watkins, he had a backhand. It, and the throw came across a little bit high, it's a base hit, second and eight for Webb, and the Blue Sox are in business with a runner on base, and one out. Yeah, it was just good hustle there by Christian Webb, I mean, it was a high hop, a uh, high first hop, I should say. Yeah. And in uh, second baseman Watkins, he kind of took his time with it. He didn't really fire it on to first um, super quick, and that allowed Webb to scoot on in there. And um, I, I think I don't think that the throw pulled him off the bag or anything. I think he just flat out beat it. Time called as Maglione gets the sign from Harold. You almost wonder what they would do here to try to get another runner in scoring position. I don't think they try a straight steal with Christian Webb by any means. Uh, time called again and awarded nonetheless. Freeman's not going to be happy about that. Yeah, it was, That's it was two, two in a row. Yeah, it was pretty late as well. Yeah. He was almost into his, uh, he was into his pause, almost ready to go, but time was called. And Maglione bunts it, Freeman fields it. Oh, throw to first, and now the tying run is at second with two away. Sacrifice hit, one to three. Now, the thing is, Ben Carew is looking to change a uh, night where he has struck out three times. This could be a situation where they're going to pinch hit. They are going to pinch hit. Carew's going to head back to the dugout, and Tanner Murphy is going to come up to hit. The cruise night is done. Murphy will pinch hit. And if I was to guess, Murphy would probably stay in the game and play center field. Yeah, that's where Murphy played last night was, yep. in, was in center field. So I would, I would uh, probably agree with you that he's probably going to stay in. And it's a big at-bat. Big at-bat here for, for Tanner Murphy and the, and the Butler Blue Sox. Got an opportunity to uh, you know send that tying run across, tie the ball game, and Possibly winning in the ninth. Yeah, this is. Uh, looks like we're gonna have a pitching change here, maybe. Mm -hmm. yeah, time called, or maybe they're just gonna get a quick scouting report in here, or just yeah. a breather. Well, everybody on the infield's gathered around. 
Two guys ready in the Kokomo bullpen. Can't tell who they are. Their orange numbers are not easy to read. No, yeah. Especially from distance. Yeah, definitely from where we're, we're sitting at. Tough to tell. Um, but, yeah, just it looks like it's just going to be a meeting here. Uh, go over hey, where yeah. the ball's going, what we're, what we're doing with this guy. And, um, I mean, Freeman has really, I mean, he, I mean, he has given up three runs. Um, but They were know, all in the f first part of the game. Yeah, I mean, since the third inning. I mean, he's moved right along and been – been very, very good. He's allowed uh, five hits, and two of them have come in, in the last three innings, including Webb's single here in the eighth. And it looks like we're going to pinch runner as well, as Joe Gunn's going to go out to pinch run for Christian Webb. Not a bad move. Gunn, pretty speedy guy. We saw that last night with a couple of great plays out in left field. And he can stay in as a DH, so you're not losing a position player there either. So, um, yeah, that was a probably a that was a real good move there. Absolutely. Here we go, Freeman against Murphy and Gunn, the tying run at second base, four-three ball game. Here's the pitch. Murphy watches a fastball for a called strike. And this has got to be a, a tough task for Tanner Murphy, pitch hitting. One of the hardest things to do in baseball, and I mean, you got to come up in a big spot like this against a guy who has been pumping all day as Freeman, and you know, you just got to try to piece something together, put a good put a good swing on something. No one swing and miss fastball too much. Murphy comes in hitting 341. Ooh. That's pretty good. Yeah. It's, he's had a couple of triples, a couple of doubles. Home run. Time called. Gun at second. Still. Base hit gets him home. Yeah, unless, there's unless not it's a one of the midfield varieties that we that, just saw. That's true. That's a good point. Base hit to the outfield will get yep. him home. Anything, yeah, anything through the infield will most definitely score Joe Gun. Pitch. A uh, called strike three on the inside corner, or thereabouts. Oh my! Well, we'll go to the ninth with Butler down four to three. It's time for each and every one of us to face a very troubling fact. There exists a significant heroin and opioid epidemic in not only Butler County, but elsewhere across the country. I'm Rich Goldinger, the District Attorney of Butler County. This is my backyard and yours too. Together, we can work to eradicate the high-level drug dealers that supply these drugs to those using them. Heroin and opioid abuse does not discriminate. Users come from all economic backgrounds, are male and female, and may be teenagers or middle-aged adults. With your help and in conjunction with the Butler County Drug Task Force and the Pennsylvania Office of Attorney General, we can target those dealers who bring this poison into our county. Please report any suspicious activity to your local law enforcement agency, the Pennsylvania State Police, or to my office. This is our ballpark. This is our county. This is our backyard. Let's all say, not in my backyard. Please enjoy tonight's Blue Sox game. Ready to go here in the top of the ninth with the 
Blue Sox trailing four to three. New pitcher is number 28, Jack Herzing from Penn State Barron, second year Blue Sox. Will take over for James Meeker, who we just talked about off there, did a yeoman's work on the mound. Yeah. Four innings of scoreless relief to keep the Blue Sox where they are down a run. Yeah, Mer Meeker, excuse me, he did all he could. Um, you know, put up, what, four consecutive zeros. Um, for the Blue Sox, kept them in this ball game, and and now we'll see if Herzing can can get things going and, and give keep it right where it's at and continue the scoreless inning streak here for five in a row. Curran swings and misses at the first pitch. He is 0 for two, sacrifice fly, or yeah, 0 for two with a sacrifice fly. to right in an RBI. Herzing threw three innings of scoreless relief down in West Virginia on Wednesday night in the victory. Swing Ooh. and a miss here, one and two. It might have been that off-speed pitch. Herzing, uh, he's got a good off-speed pitch, but he brings it uh, as well. Um, throws the ball hard from the left side, that's for sure. So far this summer, 2.31 ERA in 11 and two thirds innings pitch, 16 strikeouts to 11 walks and eight hits. Out of the pen, two and two here with current. Last summer he had a 3.89 ERA in 23 games, uh, 32 innings, ball fouled up over top of our heads. Uh, 34 strikeouts, 24 walks and 26 hits. So it's a solid arm out of the pen from the left side. Yeah. Native of St. Mary's, Pennsylvania. Up there, where the Straw Brewery is, District District Nine. Got some running kids running around here, like it's their backyard. <laughs> Not in my backyard. Not in my. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Pitch high, three and two, plus one to Kellen. <laughs> I knew somehow, some way, that was going to get worked in at some point. Yes, yeah, right. 3-2 from Herzing, popped up. That will be foul out of the stadium, I believe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's a spoiler, we'll do it again. Yeah, the one thing that Herzing, Herzing excuse me, has uh, struggled with a little bit this year is his control. As you said, 11 walks to 16 Ks, and it's something that, you know, that Herzing, I'm sure, is gonna wanna cut down on. 3-2, little flare right to Maglione. One away. That was another good pitch by Herzing. Mm -hmm. uh, sawed him off there. Yeah. Coran just tried to fight it. It looked like really looked like a defensive swing. wasn't a full swing by any means. Um, but unfortunately uh, for Coran, he just uh, hit it right at uh, hit it right at um, Watkins or excuse me, Maglione over there. Oh, first pitch right there for a called strike to the leadoff man, Fegan. Oh, for three, walked once tonight. Strikeout ground, and a pair of ground outs to short. Pitch low, one and one. It's turned out to be a beautiful evening here in Butler. Uh, there's a chance of storms all day, but they eluded the area, thankfully. Yeah, we go. Seems like every day we come here, there's a chance <laughs> of storms. <laughs> You're not wrong. You're not wrong. It's supposed to be a nice night tomorrow night, so if you're planning on coming out, a little, a little hot, but we got we got water, we got beer, we got <laughs> pop. We'll be, we'll be able to supply you. All the essentials. Yes. <laughs> and um, if you're looking to come out, I, I, I tell you what, the ticket sales are already pretty good, and there aren't that many seats left. So make sure to get a hold of us. It's ball four here to Fegan. One out walk. Last thing you want to do here is get up a run. Because you've you've worked all night yeah. to be down one run with one, you know, you got a chance here. Mm -hmm. One one more set of hacks. You don't want to end up with a second run coming across. Or I mean a fifth run coming across, I should say, and uh, making it a two run game going into that 
bottom half of the ninth. Yeah, one run, uh, one run to tie, two to win is definitely more. You know, is definitely doable. I yeah. mean, I mean, three runs to win is doable as well. You know, obviously. Yeah, but but it's a lot more manageable, as you said. Um, you know, w with making it uh, one run to tie, two to win. Harrison fastball up and in to the left-handed hitting Watkins. Who for three with a walk? I mean, if you've heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> one oh right there. Harris on deck, a swing and miss here. Oh boy. That was some sort of off speed yeah. pitch, might have I mean that had him fold there. Made that swing look well, we'll just say it wasn't pretty. <laughs> We've all been there. No doubt about that. I've been there. One, two, fouled out of the stadium. Yeah, I've been there, too. It's, it, it happens. It's all about how you respond. Unless it's strike three. Then you just <laughs> put your helmet down real low and walk back to the dugout so nobody sees your face. <laughs> <laughs> no, pickoff play. Oh, well, well. <laughs> Never mind. That was that was uh, if that's that's not Jack Herzig's A move. Uh, that was no, a, that was a lollipop <laughs> <laughs> to first base. Yeah, definitely, definitely not. Tried that to lull him to sleep, I guess. <laughs> Fastball right there. Rig him up. Strike three. And what a pitch that was there from Herzing. Yeah. That was a nasty, nasty uh, breaker. It looked like and went right in there. Called strike three, and uh, Herzing one one pitch away here, getting out of this inning and sending the uh, Butler Blue Sox into op an opportunity to uh, walk it off. Well, here's Harris. He's walked twice, popped out, and struck out. Throw over to first. Again, back safely is Fegan. A lot of speed pitch in there. And here comes the 0 1. And drifts high. Well, look, not looking too far ahead, but coming up in the ninth, we'll have Parks, Scott, Gulikowski do up. Two, three, four hitters. Runner goes, throw down from Gonzalez. It's gonna be in time to get him. Woo! He's done it again. Ray Gonzalez throws out Fegan trying to steal. And we will go to the bottom of the ninth with the Blue Sox down four to three. Here we go. Bottom of the ninth, last chance for the Blue Sox, and they got the guys up you one up, two, three, four. Parks, Scott, and Gulikowski. If they get down the order, Ferguson is the 
fifth man to hit this inning if the, if, the, if we get that lucky to be in that situation. Haven Parks is ready to go. First pitch from Freeman looking for the complete game. Here's a strike. He's 99 pitches. And his 100th is upcoming. Here it is. Parks takes called strike two. That's right there. That's a good pitch. So now Parks is going to got adjust the bang gloves, take the helmet off, try to break the rhythm. Now Parks just got to try to put something together here. Obviously down 0-2, not, not where you wanted to be uh, by any stretch. Uh, he tried to get him to chase a pitch low, but Parks holds up. Scott on deck. He's definitely capable of smashing one out of here. Gulikowski, I think he could get one too. Yeah. Uh, obviously, if we get down to Ferguson. And Ooh. pitch is uh, called strike three. And now the umpire, not only does he throw a pitch or call a guy out inside, he then shows up the batter. The batter was not happy, but that's just not professional. I'm sorry. This guy's had a rough night. He's been hearing it all night, but he's starting to lose his cool. I'm surprised he didn't toss Parks there, to tell you the truth. Yeah, I mean, that would have been the smart thing to do, or instead the of, right he, thing, instead yeah, of getting in his face. Yeah, yeah that exactly. is very strange. This guy is, he just, he just not had a, it just hasn't been a clean night. Pitch up high to Calvin Scott. I don't know. That was that was weird. You rarely ever see an umpire do that. No, you hardly don't, ever. It's like he was giving yeah, pitch outside two and zero. Yeah, that was usually in that situation. But I mean, Parks obviously said something he didn't like. And yeah, but that's not professional. I'm sorry. You just throw a guy out. You don't you don't you don't yell back at him. Scott foul Ooh. tip into the mitt. I, I think he might. I, and I don't know if he even got a piece. Of, he might have got a piece of the mitt on the way by. It's uh, two and one. Still 4-3 ball game here. One out in the ninth. And now a lion laser beam out in the right. That's a base hit. All right, we're cooking now. Runner on, the tying run, and here comes Gulikowski. Yeah, and fortunately enough for Kokomo there, they're in the no doubles defense. Otherwise, that ball is probably going to roll to the corner. Might even end up in a triple yeah. if they're not playing the line so much. I mean, we know the speed that Calvin Scott has. Uh, that, that easily could have uh, turned into a double or a triple. Have got to give yeah, yeah got to give Jesse Orio credit. Yeah, Kellen, he, he you're right. They, that's a good defensive strategy. Now, now in this case, they're still playing no doubles defense. Mm -hmm. And now, if Gorkowski can get one out there, pitch high. Uh, we got a pitcher warming up. Looks like number. 14, Colin Lawler from Ohio State is loosening in the pen. Another base hit, he might be, he might be uh, headed in. Freeman checks the runner, comes home, and the pitch is away for a ball 2-0. and oh. That's another one of them ones where that was a strike well, two batters ago. Yeah, it's yeah. just a mystery. That makes it so hard for a batter. He it, just it does. You want consistency. Yeah. I don't care if it's a little bit outside here to throw. Oh, the ball gets away. Here comes Scott. He's going to run. He's on his way to second, and he's going to park there. Wow. After a wild uh, error by the pitcher, a wild throw to first base. And we got the tying run in scoring position. Yeah, it's, uh, that's <laughs> not what you want there, obviously. You, uh, you know, uh, you don't want to put the, the tying run in scoring position, and, and you do it by way of an error. That's got to hurt. Uh. Yeah. That's got to, you know. You know, after. he's thrown over there at least 25 times yeah. tonight, and he finally got bit by it. Pitch high, 3-0 and oh now. And I wonder if they're just going to say uh, yeah, four. Yeah. I, I don't think you can, though, because then you're, you're really giving Ferguson an opportunity. And of course, Gonzalez could hit into a double play ball, but you're putting him on deck. Yeah, yeah. 3-0 count. I imagine Gulikowski would be frozen here. Yep. Pitch is yeah. called strike. Yeah. 
you definitely don't want to swing it at ball four when it's 3-0 or yeah. hit a ball right at someone or someone like something like that. You want to get a good pitch to drive, yeah. and a 3-1 count can definitely do that there for you. Pitch inside ball four. Now you got to wonder if they're going to go to the pen. I would not be surprised, that's for sure. Lawler's still warming up, and here comes the pitching coach out of the dugout. And is he going to let him finish? That's the question. He is now sitting at 110 pitches. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised um, if they let him go. You know, and, and if they get behind Ray Gonzalez here, you almost wonder if maybe they would walk the bases loaded to get to Ferguson. I don't know if that's the smartest thing in the world. All right, yeah, I, I man, I, I can't, he's sticking with his horse. We'll just go to that. Yeah, I, I mean, he, he's pitched the ball he extremely has. well in, in this ball game, and, and he's, the only mistake, he's made two mistakes in this game. One was a no, a no doubter home run to Ferguson, and then that error. That was really the only two mistakes he's made all day. I will say this. He did throw another one to Ferguson there. <laughs> if it was, if yeah, it was somewhere is, uh, other than center field, it would true. have been over the fence. It's a very good point. And I don't think he'll let him face him again. I really I don't. No, He's uh, hit this, him hard he's, twice. He probably might have just said, hey, buddy, this is your last guy. First pitch is low to Ray Gonzalez, who is 0 for 3 on the evening. But what can it change at here? And pitch is in, in the turf, blocked nicely. That's a big block there, um, back there by by Schwing. Because if he doesn't, if he doesn't block that up, uh, that can allow the tying run to get to third, and then the winning run to get to second base. All right. Two zero. -oh. Here's the pitch. Oh, big cut, nothing of it. That's a good cut, though. That's yeah. exactly the type of swing you want on 2-0. You know, Ray Gonzalez knowing that, you know, one swing can tie this ball game up and would probably um, put uh, Gulikowski uh, in scoring position, uh, definitely in scoring position. Calvin Scott at second, Gulikowski at first. Here's the pitch. It's fouled off 2-2. Right off, that's where they say you're right on it if you fouled straight back. That's exactly right. He didn't miss that thing by much. <laughs> Got back to that screen in a, in a second. Check of second, here's the pitch. Gonzalez oh, chops. Boy. This could be a double play on the first. Gonzalez is out. That'll do it. Double play to end the game. That's just the way it went tonight. And the Jackrabbits are winners here tonight, 4-3. to three. Yeah, it's just a tough break. Um, I mean, you get exactly where you need to go, and... And then, uh, ground, you know, you ground into a double play to end the ball game. Put a good swing on it, just topped it. And uh, that's just how it goes. Well, he's split with the Jackrabbits here tonight. Uh, not going the Blue Sox way. And it started back in the third inning, or actually second inning, when Schwing tripled on a ball that uh, – Mercanja lost in the sun out in left field. Then he comes around to score on a sacrifice fly uh, by Curran to make it one nothing. Then the Jackrabbits, Blue Sox tied it in the bottom half of the second on a solo shot by Ferguson. It was uh, Oppo. And then three runs come across in the third, a couple of walks, and then a bunt single loaded the bases. Willis with an RB, uh, two RBI single. 
than Jesse Orio with a sack fly to center. That made it four to one at that point. Blue Sox get two back in the bottom half of the third inning when uh, Webb and Maglione both singled and Maglione ended up scoring Webb with his single. And then later on, a ground out by Scott brought in Webb, or I'm sorry, Maglione, and Parks tried to score on the play too and was thrown out. From there, it was all pitching. Blue Sox got the tying run in the scoring position in both the uh, eighth and ninth innings, but couldn't get them home. And that's how it ends tonight, 4-3. William Freeman is your winning pitcher. He throws a complete game and allows the three runs, all of which were earned with Kokomo not having it. Oh, they did have an error. Oh, that was, was on him and ninth. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, they were all earned runs. Yeah, he gave up six hits. And he had a bevy of strikeouts tonight. I got him a 10. I think that's, yeah, and he only walked three as well. Yep. So Very good. Very good performance. Winning pitcher, complete game over. Just, uh, let's see, he threw 115 pitches. Bryce Speck will take the loss. Four plus tonight, four runs all earned, three hits, seven walks, three strikeouts. But the, the good thing was the bullpen, James Meeker, four sh innings did not allow a run, only allowed one hit. And then Jack Herzing also pitching a scoreless inning in the ninth to keep the Blue Sox in it. They just couldn't quite get that tying run tonight. We'll try again tomorrow when the West Virginia Miners come into town. Any final thoughts for you, Kellen? No, I mean, uh, you know, the Sox, uh, they battled the whole game and came back there. And, and uh, you know, they were down, what was it? They were down th three in the uh, third inning and, and made a comeback and answered. And then, you know, just came up a little short tonight. And that's, that's the way it goes, you know. Um, if uh, Ray Gonzalez, you know, gets a little lift on that ball or, you know, he tops it a little more, it, it's, you know, he probably beats it out. It's not a double play ball or it's a hit. And, and we're, we're talking about winning this thing, you know. So that's how baseball goes. That's how the game goes a lot of times. So, um, you know, nothing to hang their heads at. Uh, you know, they, they ran into a kind of a buzzsaw on the mound tonight. Freeman, uh, 10 Ks, and, and pitched the whole game. And, you know, that's, that's kind of tough sometimes. Well... Blue Sox fall to eight and eight on the summer, but they, the last two ball games have been encouraging because yeah, oh yeah. they've been kind of a roller coaster team with errors and, mm -hmm. and uh, some some wild games of like 16-12, 16-14, whatever. Right. Uh, they've been clean ball games the last two nights yeah. and uh, seem to be uh, heading in the right direction. But unfortunately, uh, just not able to get that one run this evening. So. Uh, for my broadcast partner, Kellen Gursky, for my producer, Allison Schubert, I'm Jaron Steele. Thanking you for joining us tonight. The final score, one last time, the Kokomo Jackrabbits win 4-3. to three. They improved to 7-8 and eight on the summer, and Blue Sox fall to 8-8. Eight and eight. Tomorrow, Jake Stout on the hill for the Blue Sox, 7.05 start. We hope you can join us. Uh, thanks for listening tonight, and uh, we'll do it again tomorrow. <laughs>